Hi everybody, welcome back to this channel. Uh, uh, today we're going to talk about the element constraint and the connection constraint in S domain, which is the starting point if you solve a circuit in S domain, you first need to transform the circuit from the uh, time domain to the Laplace domain or S domain. So that's the um, uh, very, very first step you're going to use the Laplace transform in solving circuits. Uh, as always, I'm going to leave the link to the Google Colab notes for this lecture in the description down below. And if you have any comments, you can always leave comments, um, leave your comments in the comment area. Um, so today, uh, probably I'm going to have four video clips. Um, so we're going to cover the uh, element constraint in S domain. So I'm going to cover in two video clips. Uh, the first one would be for the resistance and inductance and the second one would be the uh, for the capacitance and the then we cover the uh, concept of impedance and emittance and also i'm going to have an example on this and the uh, last uh, video clip going to cover the um, connection constraint which is the kvl and which are the kvl and the kcl uh, in the s domain and uh, as we did in very detail in for the phaser so i'm not going to go through the detail rather using a very basic uh, example to illustrate how we write the kcl equation and kbl equation in s domain okay so let's start with the first um, first two uh, elements the resistance and capacitance in the resistance in time domain we know first thing is the passive sign convention right the first thing here is that we need to be very clear about this passive sign convention. And of course, here we are following this passive sign convention because the reference mark for the current is entering all points to, towards, uh, goes, goes into the plus uh, reference mark of the voltage, right? So that's the sign. Or you can have the current leaving, the current reference mark leaving from the negative sign of the um, uh, the voltage reference mark. So here we are following the passive sign convention. If you do, and then Ohm's law will be um, will be the equation you can write. So that's going to be R times I sub R T. So this is in time. If you transform in, in the Laplace domain and you take the Laplace transform on both sides of the equation based on the linearity property and we would have uh, the I V sub R and V sub R S that's going to be equal I times I sub R S so very straightforward and of course here the V sub R is the just the Laplace transform of uh, lowercase v sub r t and the i i sub r so we use the similar convention for all the other um, variables as well so i sub r s that's equal to the laplace transform of i sub r t okay and if you draw the equivalent circuit or draw the symbols in this case, the equivalent circuit would be in the S domain, we would have something like this. So still using this uh, same symbol, but we label we label this as R. Or here we have the voltage, so V sub R, S, and I sub R, S. And by the way, one of the very kind of technical issue that when you do the Laplace transform, actually you integrate over time, right? Unlike the uh, uh, the phaser here, actually we change the unit, so all the current become amp seconds, which is the, the uh, quantity for the charge, right? And for the voltage, that become the volt seconds, and that's the uh, quantity for uh, that's the unit for the flux linkage. But very uh, rarely we think this flux linkage technically flux linkage be V in S domain or the uh, charge in the uh, I in S domain as the flux linkage or charge. We still think of them as the current because finally we're going to do the inverse Laplace transform. We're going to get back to the time domain. So the unit, we are not quite, um, so conceptually, we're still thinking this 
V sub R as a voltage and I sub R as as a current. So basically, we're using this coolant circuit to represent the the this is the element constant for the resistance in S domain. Okay, that's quite straightforward for the resistance. And for the inductance, it's a little bit more interesting. So for inductance, we can describe the voltage and current either using differential equation or we use integration, right? Or the using the integral equation. And uh, let's see. First, let's start with the differential equation. And the differential equation for the inductance is V sub L T is going to be equal L D I D I sub L T D T, right? So in this case, if we apply the Laplace transform on both sides, we would have, and then here the property we're going to use is called the differentiation property, right? So the differentiation property is that if you take the Laplace transform derivative, that's going to be equal S times the Laplace transform of that original signal minus the uh, initial condition. Okay, so therefore, if we apply the Laplace transform on both sides, we would have V sub L capital S, that's going to be equal L, and now inside this, we would have S times I sub L S minus I sub L zero. Right. If you have a step change, you should use I sub zero minus, right? Um, but that's Let's see here that we use I sub zero. So I sub zero, I sub L zero, that's the initial condition. Initial condition for the induction current. Right? And in this case, we could write this, uh, we could multiply this out. We have L times S times I sub S minus L I sub L zero. So if I draw the equivalent circuit and I could draw this way and I have a voltage. So this is total voltage. That's gonna be the voltage across this one here, L S times Let's see, this is a current I sub S, uh, I S, and uh, L S times I S. Oh, this is just L S. So the, the voltage across this is going to be this term, right? Um, and then we have another, this is like uh, the voltage source minus this one. I could do this negative L I zero. If I don't like this negative sign here, I can remove this negative sign. I flip the sign of this voltage, right? So this would be this would be the voltage V sub L. This I'm I'm getting too low there, and so this is V sub L S. And make sure here the one with the um, so I put. Let me maybe write in red. So let's see the um, the VL T is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of V sub L S, right? And make sure that's not equal to this voltage here. Let's call this voltage as V sub L prime S. Right? This V sub L prime is not equal to the inverse Laplace transform of V sub L S prime S, unless you have this term is equal to zero, right? So just pay attention to that. So this term, so the V sub L S, it, let's see this one I call the V sub L prime S. And this term is not the total capacity inductor voltage. This is only part of the inductor voltage, right? So this is one thing um, we need really need to pay attention to if we use this equivalent circuit in solving uh, the um, the any uh, actual circuits, okay? And another way of doing so uh, another way of uh, deriving this equivalent circuit that if I have a uh, if I use an integration integral equation or integration. So that I sub L T 
should be equal to. So I sub L T is equal to um, is equal to the I sub L zero, right? That's the initial condition plus one over L. We integrate that from zero to T, and we have V sub L. And in that case, we use a dummy variable detail. So in this case, we um, do the um, we apply the Laplace transform, and I would get I sub L S on the one side. At the other side, I would get uh, I sub L zero over S plus one over L S. So now I'm using the integration property of the Laplace transform, which and times V sub L. Uh, v sub L S, and in this case, I can also uh, draw the equivalent circuit. In this case, I can draw the equivalent circuit something like this using the uh, KCL. So I have a total current this I sub L S, and that should be equal to the current through this element here, and this element we call the L S, and we will see later. We actually this is the impedance of inductance, and we have the current, and the current here is I sub L zero over S. Right. So in this case, the here the voltage V sub capital V sub L uh, S. Right. So there are two different equivalent circuits we can use, and the first the equivalent circuit of the uh, this the, the two we can also get by just uh, uh, do the algebraic equations. So let's see if we can do that. So in this case, we can if we just uh, change this equation, we move things around. So let's see from this equation. By the way, here this V sub L S. If we move um, the L L uh, times I sub L zero to the other side, we get L S times I sub S is equal L times I sub L zero um, plus V V sub L S. And if we divide L S on both sides, and we have uh, I sub S, I S over equal to I sub L zero over S because the L be canceled plus one over L S. Times VLS, right? So I think this is the same equation as the one we derived from the the uh, integration, right? Okay, so that's the um, uh, that's the element constraint for the inductance. Um, I'm gonna show you the element constraint for the capacitance very quickly in the next next clip. See you in a moment.